So I had a couple in my office about two weeks ago and she was complaining that she didn't feel like a priority in her uh, husband's life. And he said, I don't understand how you can possibly think that, you know, we watch our shows together just about every night after the kids go to bed. We go on date night once a week. And uh, I took you on that business trip with me a few weeks ago, you know, so we could have more time together. And so let me tell you the mistakes in that. <laughs> Number one, uh, this husband was focused on, first of all, refuting what his wife said to him. She's saying, I don't feel like a priority. That means that's how she feels. She knows you watch shows together. She knows you go on business trips. She knows that you have date night, but she still doesn't feel connected to you. And so number one, if someone says this to you, do not list all the things that you do for them. This is a problem not just out of the gate. It's not helping you get to the goal of figuring out why don't they feel like that was connecting time? They knew all that happened, so why don't they feel like it was really good time? And it's because it wasn't really connecting. So people talk a lot about, you know, making a, themselves a priority, you know, make me a priority. I want you to spend more time with me. And time is not it. It's, and it, we hear the words quality time. Well, what the hell is quality time? Quality time is connecting time. If it's not connecting, it doesn't count. I know, this sucks, but it's the truth. So really, and quality time, or connecting time, really has two components. And they are, number one, your absolute full attention on the other person. There's full attention. So that means no TV distraction, no phones, or just even having them out, just in case you get something and you're hearing the buzz and all that. It means full attention. It means if you're working on your computer, you close the screen, you don't just look up from it. If you're cooking something on the stove, it means you turn off the burner, you turn completely around, you look at this person, that's full attention. Not distracted attention, not you know, I'm stirring this while I'm talking to you and the kids are, yeah, hold on, and I'm doing this in between, that's not full attention. So that's one piece. And then the second piece of true connecting time is that there's a goal of listening and connection that that's actually the goal of it, that you're thinking to yourself, oh, this is this time and we're gonna really connect and it's gonna be great. So the, in, with this couple, the watching the shows together, there wasn't full attention. He was often on his phone or, or computer answering emails. She was often doing something also, like she was on her phone too. It wasn't like it was all him, but they're not, yeah, they would comment on the show occasionally, but it's not truly connecting. Connecting is hearing about another person's thoughts feelings, dreams, beliefs, uh, worries, whatever, that's connecting. That's really sharing something uh, more, a little deeper than who was on The Bachelor. And not that those things can't be a great bonding. I'm not saying they can't. They can help you sort of bond when you have something in common like that and you sort of joke about it or talk about it. But don't substitute this for true connecting time because it's really not in an ongoing way. Uh, you know, taking the business trip that he gave as an example. Well, he was off, she was at the end of the day. He, which is fine, because that was the business trip. But of course she's at the end of the day when all of his other stuff is done, when everything else is taken care of. So she felt like a, a last, an afterthought. And then the date nights, again, are fine. And they actually had some nice date nights. Although a lot of their date nights were spent talking about the kids, which, you know, if all you're talking about is your kids, you're not, you're connecting a little, but not completely on these other things. And a lot of times they went to the movies or they went to see a show. They had tickets to the ballet and some other things. And they would go do these things, which again, they both enjoyed, but it's not necessarily them really talking and sharing and really having a moment of true connection. So that's what I want you to focus on for now on. When you're thinking of your partner and don't think about the big things. Everyone thinks about the big things, going on the big date nights or the trips or the romantic whatevers. It does not have to be all that. I talk about this all the time, greeting them at the door, stopping what you're doing. Your partner comes home from work or errands or wherever they were, you stop what you're doing, you hear them, you hear the garage door open or the front door open or whatever it is, the dog's barking because they're home and you go to the door and you make eye contact right there and you say, hey, welcome home, or oh, I'm so glad you're here, or I missed you, or whatever is true. Uh, can I get you anything? Can I grab those bags for you? Can I whatever? And you actually, again, with that intention of listening and connection. 
And you might be thinking, well, Abby, what am I going to listen to if someone's coming home from, let's say, errands and they're bringing in the groceries? Uh, what am I listening to? Well, you're listening to see if there's something else that needs to be happening. Is there, you know, hey, can I grab these for you? And they might say, well, no, but if you could really help, you know, put them away once I get in the kitchen, that'd be really great. Um, and then when you're in the kitchen putting them away, really, again, maybe even stop putting them away and make some, or when you're finished putting them away, make some eye contact. Say, hey, how's it going? You know, what are you thinking of today? What are we doing? I was hoping we'd have some time together. Whatever it is, make out. Making out is nice. I like to make out with my man when he comes home uh, at the door <laughs> whenever I can. I can't always. I was always in the middle of something. It's not time or I'm not feeling it or whatever. But in a, in a way of just really having intention and really being thoughtful, making sure you say goodnight in a very real way. Uh, that there's, again, true intention to connect, to listen, to, to be there, to really have something going on. When you start to set this intention, it starts to show up everywhere and people start to really feel connected. You're not going to feel connected in your relationship if you go out once a week, even if it's a great date. That's not enough. It, it's really about all those micro connections every single day that when they come together is how we truly feel like we've had connecting time. And that's what quality time is. So if your person says, I need to feel like more of a priority, you need to ask them what would help you feel like more of a priority. Find out more information so that you're really listening to what they need. That's it for today. I'm Dr. Abby Metcalf. I help people create lasting change in their relationships in a short amount of time, whether or not their partner or anybody else will even do one thing.